My friends, I want to thank you for watching this video. If you like what you see, please click the subscribe button and click the notification bell. And if you think you're already subscribed, please check to make sure YouTube hasn't unsubscribed you without your permission. It happens every day. And if you really like what you see, please consider becoming a channel member or even leaving a super thanks donation to help keep us going. I promise to answer each and every one I receive. Thank you for watching, my friends, and now, on to the video. How fitting it is that the trailer for Star Wars The Acolyte should drop on the very same day that George Lucas killed off Star Wars for good. Oh, I know, Star Wars was dead long before Lucas bent the knee to Bob Iger and bestowed upon him Lucas's stock shares, effectively ending Nelson Peltz's bid to get board seats and ensuring that Iger can carry on destroying Star Wars, Marvel, and Disney itself, as he has for years now, and yet this was the last nail in the lid of the coffin. How apropos! that Lucas sides with his abusers and betrayers, and then that same day, the universe presents us with a tangible glimpse of the very future of Star Wars that Lucas has condemned us to repeat over and over again ad nauseum. Behold, the future of Star Wars, the Acolyte, as presented in a laughably crap trailer featuring a bunch of stunning brave women engaged in badly staged bland-to-bland -bland combat a universe bravely and stunningly free of any of those troublesome white men that snowflakes find so triggering, and free of that elusive spark of divine inspiration that in the past was called quality. This garbage stinks, my friends. In fact, saying that is an insult to the very concept of stinking. And while it's too soon to say for sure, it strongly suggests that my Hollywood spies were spot on about the leaked plot to the Acolyte, the only time will tell if this was disinformation or accurate. In the meantime, what did I think of the trailer? The trailer sucks, my friends. And what did you expect in a project so fraught with incompetence and KK's special sauce of suck? This thing was cobbled together from disjointed pieces and so many reshoots, it is rumored to be the most expensive Disney Plus show ever! Running in excess of $300 million, and what does $300 million get you? A heretofore unseen view of the Jedi Knight Diversity Daycare Center. Pay what you can, we're in it for the brainwashing folks, not for the money. The kids get images of darkness and light, and then we see this disgruntled chick who, it appears, will have two expressions throughout the series, angry and pissed off about the patriarchy. And this woman will have exactly two lines, grrr and re, rinse and repeat as needed. Someone is killing Jedi, apparently. No, not, not George. Well, at least not in this case. I mean, he killed everything in the Star Wars universe, not just Jedi. No, it's more likely to be this vivacious young lady walking around with Robert Conrad's battery on her shoulder, going grrr and ree and daring anyone to knock it off. The one big fight we see in this trailer is with Carrie Ann Moss and this disgruntled chick, and the fight is just laughably god-awful. Carrie Ann Moss is moving between poses like a guy in a dance class counting a one and a two, block three, and a turn. It's stiff, mechanical, and more people would have noticed how awful it is except for the fact that what immediately follows is so fucking bad it kind of sucks up all the attention. This acolyte, or whatever she is, gets hit and just kind of slides smoothly across the floor, like Michael Jackson doing the moonwalk, minus the walk. It's more like a moon glide, really. A moon glide of death. Oh, if I was a whammon, I'd walk away from this feeling so empowered. <laughs> but instead, since I'm not a whammon, I walk away from this bored as shit and disgusted to the very fiber of my soul. To help me work through my feelings about this dumpster drop of a trailer, I turn to my friend and ally, Mexican Iron Man. You know, I look at this trailer and all I see is a bunch of whammon jumping around, waving sticks and looking all sinister and girl powery. It's just so fucking hollow and ridiculous. And, of course, they also make a, a point in the trailer of saying, 
this isn't about good or about evil. Well, then it's not really about Star Wars, because Star Wars was all about good or evil. The dark side of the Force, the light side of the Force, the duality of good and evil. The acolyte wants to just go ahead and, eh, it's all, you know, intersectional. It's all relative. There is no good, there is no evil. Well, I'll tell you what is bad. Disney Star Wars is bad. And this trailer, in my way of thinking, is terrible. Uh, what, what did you think, Mike? A few things stood out for me. One was that opening scene with the uh, Jedi diversity toddler uh, preschool camp. Yes, uh, exactly. At the temple. I mean, you know, taking the time to make sure that they showed. Not only do we have little kids at the Jedi school, but they are diverse and inclusive. Look at this Asian one. Look at this one. Look at that one. Look at this one. I was like, oh, my God. Uh. I mean, look. The other thing, too, is the, uh, uh, is the, uh, is the uh, marketing line of this thing. In a period of life, dark, dark, light, darkness rises. I'm like, of course it does for you Disney people. You know why? Because you start, all you can bring to the table is darkness. That what it should be is like in an era of darkness, light emerges. And it's a story of the Jedi doing, fixing evil and da-da-da. But you know what? When these people come to the table with evil, uh, with evil intent, and evil creates e- e- with with uh, with, uh, with with evil creative ideas, we're going to get something like this. The next thing that stood out was all the, you know, action, and you know, you, they clearly spent a lot of money on this thing. You can tell they clearly, by the look and feel of this, are spending big bucks uh, on on this. Now, doesn't mean we're going to get a story or any characters we're going to like, but you know what? We are going to get a bunch of we're going to get a bunch of lightsabers. Because there's a whole bunch of those in this thing. Well, you know what? When I saw this Acolyte trailer, the other thing I said, you know, I've got like 27, 28 of these hanging on my walls, like upstairs and downstairs. I was like, don't care. Don't care, Doomcock. Don't care. You're not going to convince me with flashy little moving around and with uh, women diversity Jedis running around. And look, I'm a big fan of Carrie Ann Moss, and she's right in the middle of this thing. Oh, but you know God. what? Carrie Ann Moss cannot cannot say can, cannot cannot save this thing. There's no way. And the rest of the characters, I'm going to be telling you, Doomcock. My third observation is they look ridiculous. Some of the diversity casting and makeup of some of the aliens that were it, it's just silly. It, honestly, it looks like Star Wars clown show. Star Wars clown show. That's my that's what I saw took out of this thing. Well, I saw shitty action. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, you know, Carrie Ann Moss. Yeah, I, I love Trinity. You know, I love the Matrix. The Matrix is awesome. But the scene where she encounters this, uh, you know, strong, sithy kind of whammon in the bar, ah, uh, yeah. and and they and they fight. It is not at all realistic. You get the sense that that they're just walking through uh, a choreography uh, sequence. Where they're internally counting one, two, three, four, punch. and two, two punch, and and the scene where like Carrie Ann Moss force pushes this woman across the floor, and and <laughs> she's on some kind of yeah, it's, it's like it's like her. <laughs> it like, looks absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, it looks like she was on wires in a roller. Oh, she was. It, it, it's not doesn't look like that, Mike. She fucking was. I mean, it's, it's embarrassing. And by the way, uh, I had no. a big leak yeah. about the Acolyte, about what it was about, that it was very similar to the plot of Netflix's Arcane, uh, you know, with the, you know, Sithy Master and the, you know, Jedi, you know, detective going around and his Padawan who meets this whammon. And, you know, I, I apparently, from what, from what my spy's source said, uh, you know, Carrie Ann Moss, I guess, is going to fall in love with, you know, the, the Sithy girl that they're fighting in the bar and all this shit. But, yeah, you know, you know what is really missing from this is uh, uh, no no real white males that I could. No, I, I mean, I I think, look, I saw the I saw the trailer twice. I think I glimpsed one dude one time. I think, yeah, well, he was like a victim or something like yeah. uh, he was yeah. being like, you know, Jedi mind tricked by the Asian Jedi. Well, that's because in a long, 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 long time ago, in a galaxy farther away, I guess we got rid of all the white. Du- I guess we got rid of all the white dudes, Doomcock. Oh yeah, well you know, white white guy purge and a whole bunch of you know Jedi like getting blown away by. I wonder what is blowing them away in that scene where all the like Jedi you know are waving their light sticks around and 
and then they get pushed away. I bet it's a strong whammon. Oh yeah, gotta be. What, what do you think? You think it's a you think it's a strong whammon by any chance? Gotta be. Got, and and not just a strong whammon, Doomcock. A stunning <laughs> and brave strong whammon. Oh ah, yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, you know, George Lucas betraying Star Wars for the last time on the day when the Acolyte trailer releases is absolute poetic justice. It this absolutely thing is because, ridiculous. Because in the, in these twenty four hours, we have gotten a rubber stamp of where we what Star Wars, which was once great, was, and what we've got today, and that tells us everything we need to know about yeah. about what our future looks like, which ain't going to be better than our recent past. No, it's not. And, and, you know, I love it when you see that whammon, like, you know, spinning and twirling, like, high in the air. For what reason? Not actually dodging anything, not doing anything, twirling around. You know what I do? If I'm a Jedi or a Sith and I see, like, the whirling dervish, like, jumping up and doing that, I just force push him right into a tree or over a cliff or into a rock. Yeah. I <laughs> always slam him to the ground with the force. That twirly-ass shit doesn't do anything. Uh, it just like you know looks like hey we had enough money to hire a fucking gymnast or something, or it's CG, I mean or it's AI. Uh, what it is is a gutless, spineless, mindless pastiche of the greater Star Wars uh, as it existed once upon a time in a galaxy far, far away. But I tell you what, Star Wars don't exist here. No longer is KK the cause of it. KK was the instrument that you used, George, to destroy Star Wars. Fuck and, you. And the rule of the Sith says there are always two. Yeah, so basically, you know, George Lucas and, and Darth KK, right? Darth George and Darth KK. George Lucas voting his shares to enable Bob Iger to carry on the cultural destruction. Uh, well, I guess he figures Star Wars is dead, so, mm, well, it doesn't really matter, does it? Fuck you, George. God, I never <laughs> thought I would... I never thought that I would basically just think, fuck you, George Lucas. How sad that the world has come to this. It is sad indeed. The only bright note is that while we might lose the... Uh, in particular, a battle at Star Wars, a battle with Kurtzman at Star Trek is here at Xanadu, the war wages on, and overall, though, Doomcock... We are winning against the war on woke and, and the fight to save pop culture, I believe, has made a turn. Unfortunately, on this day, IPs like Stanford are, are, are like uh, Star Wars. Um, our days like this is like we have to stand back and say when we stand for something like Star Wars, we're going to lose a battle here or there. And on this day, this is the battle that's been lost. Star Wars is a lost battle. But the war rages on. And uh, overall, I do believe that the tide is turning, and that is the only light that I can see at the end of the tunnel, because uh, one thing that's for sure is that I don't give up hope. You teach us that at Xanadum. You lead us in that. We never give up. We never surrender, and the fight continues. And if you stand for, if you're going to stand for something, then you must continue on. Otherwise, you stand for nothing. Yeah, absolutely. There is no, there is no uh, scenario where this woke garbage uh, continues and makes money. It can only continue and lose money. Yeah. I mean, that we have seen that clearly. That demographic is not enough to drive, you know, billion-dollar multinational corporations to profitability. It's just not. These people don't really care about cinema like we do. They don't really care about television like we do. They certainly do not follow it uh, with a great passion. They are not apt to go and buy merchandise they are kind of just soulless uh propagandist consumers but they're 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 not the future of of uh entertainment in fact uh they the entertainment better start finding a way to save its ass because they're going the way of the dinosaur yep well so the acolyte are you looking forward to it mike I'm looking forward to dissecting and slicing and dicing with my overlord as it comes out. But no, I'm not looking forward to it. I, I look, I, I haven't even, I have 27 of these lightsabers on my wall. I haven't charged any of them and put new batteries in the ones that need batteries and recharge yeah, in a year, I think. And that's, un and that's uncharacteristic. So that's not me for the last couple of decades, but that's what it's come to. Where even a guy like me that has like, you'll see, a, you'll see, a, see that helmet right there? You know what that is? Yep. Yep, right. It's an X-wing pilot helmet. 
And there's more stuff. There's, you know, you see a couple of lightsabers here. Those are two of maybe 20 cents. I just don't care. I just don't care. I but I'm angry. In the, oh, I know it, man. I see in the future Mexican Iron Man's used lightsaber emporium, where basically you're just going to sell off your lightsabers because you just no longer can be bothered to give a shit and, you know, have something better on that wall space because this, this, this stuff, who cares? Buy a lightsaber honestly. collection and a Jedi helmet. Get a free sombrero. Bye now. <laughs> well, the acolyte will be on it like a uh, stank on a hairy dog's ass. Mike, thanks for coming on the show, buddy. Thanks for having me, DC. From the center of the earth, this is Dictor Van Doomcock bidding you all, my friends, stay angry. Ha, 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 ha,